Hi there. Um, so this video is going to introduce this idea of doing quantitative conservation of energy questions. So quantitative. Last week you were doing qualitative, so looking at things and seeing if things were bigger or smaller, but not necessarily with any numbers. But today we're going to use numbers. And many of you will have done questions like this in Science 10. Although it was a long time ago, but so maybe if you can think back a bit, it might be a bit of a review. So, so far, hopefully you kind of get the idea of the, the um, LOL charts, and hopefully you're half decent at doing these uh, energy calculations. Okay, so this question is, there's a cart, it's at rest, it goes down a hill, how fast is it traveling at the bottom? Assume there's no friction. So I'm gonna start with the, uh, with the L <laughs> LOL chart. Cracks me up every time. And I'm going to say what's in the system. So we have the cart, the hill, and earth. Okay, at the top, there's no kinetic energy. Um, I'm going to call this the reference point for the gravity. So there definitely is some gravity at the beginning. And then when it gets to the bottom, there's no gravitational energy. It says there's no friction, so no thermal. And it's moving, so there's a bunch of EK. So we have an equation here, EG equals EK. And from that, we can plug in our equations. So we could go MGH equals 1 half MV squared. And there's one nice thing about plugging in your equations at this point in the problem. And that is, let's suppose the question was slightly different. And it asks for the velocity, or how fast it's going, but we didn't know the mass of the cart. Let's suppose we don't know the mass of the cart. And you go, hey, Mr. Smith, how can I get the velocity if I don't even know the mass of the cart? Well, the thing is, with this equation, those masses cancel out. You can solve for V without even knowing the mass. So it's not a bad idea to, to go about solving problems that way. Keep in mind, though, let's suppose, let's just suppose that it wasn't frictionless and there was some friction. So there was some thermal energy. If there's thermal energy in this kind of question, you can't cancel out the masses because there's no mass in E therm to cancel out. So we can only do the canceling if we have only gravitational and kinetic energies. OK, back to the question. So we could solve for V that way. Another way that would be common for students to solve is to calculate the things they know and then find the, the missing variable. So we actually know we can ca calculate EG. So all the mass is 0.5 kilograms, 9.8 newtons per kilogram, height of 4.08 meters. Put that in a calculator. So half of 9.8 is 4.9, 4.08 times 19.992. Joules. Okay, therefore EK is 19.99 joules. And we have this equation, 1 half mv squared equals EK. So V equals 2 times EK divided by mass square root. So I'm going to multiply that by 2, divide by 0.5, which is divide, multiplying by 2 anyways. And did I do something wrong? 2, 19.992. No, no, that was right. And square root, you get 8.9 meters per second. OK, so that's how to do that kind of question. Second question, um, cart. Going down a hill, this time it has a starting velocity, and we're asked a whole bunch of separate questions. And it looks like there's some friction. So we'll have to keep that in mind. OK, so I'm going to put the cart, track, earth. OK, at the start, there is some EK, it's a bunch of EG. I'm going to call this my reference point. Uh, when it gets to the bottom, there's no EG. There is some thermal, 
and that means the rest is ek so this is five blocks we need four blocks of ek okay so we have ek1 plus eg1 equals ek2 plus etherm all right first question what is the total mechanical energy which is kinetic and potential energy put together that's what mechanical energy is so you're expected to know that. That's like a memorization thing at the beginning. Okay, so EK1 is 1 half mv squared, 1 half 0 0.5, 4.47 squared equals 0 0.25, 4.47 squared. That is 4.995. Joules. Okay, EG1, MGH, 0 0.5, 9.8, 2.04. So 1 half 9.8 is 4.9 times 2.04, 9.996. Okay, we can now answer the question what is the total mechanical energy? E mech equals those two added up together. 14.99. Okay, what is the total energy at the beginning? So and it, the total energy is the mechanical plus thermal. So it's it's everything. It's kinetic, it's potential, which is the mechanical, plus thermal. There is no thermal at the beginning, so the answer to B is the same as A. E total is equal to 14.99 joules. Okay, question C. What is the total energy at the same at the end? Okay. Total energy in a system never changes. Conservation of energy. E total is the same at the end as it was at the beginning. It's 14.99 joules. D. What is the velocity of the cart when it is descended? It says the thermal energy is 4 joules is transferred to thermal. So we know this, we know this, we know this, we're going to get that. So EK2 is E mechanical minus E therm because these two put together is the mechanical. So that is equal to 14.99 um, minus 4, 10.99 joules. Velocity is 2 times EK divided by M. And I'll put, so, so I'm going to subtract 4 from that, so it's 10.99. So I'm going to multiply that by 2. Divide by the mass, 0 0.5, square root, 6.63 meters per second. So there you go. So this question kind of covers a lot of different aspects of um, solving these problems. Um, we, we couldn't use the, this kind of technique in this question. There's, we can't cancel out m's because you can't, there's no m. If, if we didn't know the mass, we couldn't cancel it out. Um, what else? Going through a couple of definitions of like mechanical energy and total energy and solving for unknowns. All right. Good luck with the rest of the questions.